drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. How's it going? Some of you may know Bailey here, Bailey Boo. The uh, clip tripping video, uh, some of you folks were inquiring as to why he was limping on his left paw here. So I'm here to share a little bit of Bailey's story with you today. It starts way back in 2012. At that point in time, I was an equipment operator and I was servicing the landfill. Same landfill you guys saw with the Eagles. Well, I used to go there a couple times a week and operate a dozer. One of the uh, unfortunate things about the landfill is it is a place where a lot of folks dump unwanted critters. So, um, three of our cats came from the landfill. One day I went to work and guess who was at the landfill? He was near the share shed. Yes, she was near the share shed. And he was sitting there, looking all sad, the wire around his neck as, as just something to hold him in place, so to speak. Terrible, terrible thing. And he was, he was still a puppy. He was a big puppy. I'll throw a picture in here, let you see him. And him and Bella were both babies eight years ago. So yeah, this sad, abused and tossed away a little puppy, big puppy, came to be part of our pack. So Bailey's, uh, Bailey's nine this year. Yeah. You like the smooth jazz? <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if you guys recall, there was a, there was a video last summer and I talked about uh, the boys, Pecos, Bailey, and Doobie having a bit of a dust up in the shop. Boys will be boys, and uh, pack mentality being what it is, we just figure that uh, somebody had somebody else's parking spot and they weren't too happy about it. But uh, subsequently, um, he had uh, like a sprained wrist, and Pecos had a bit of a bite on one of his legs. You know, antiseptic, treated it, nothing serious. His limp went away after a couple of days, and we were like, well, okay, well, hopefully they don't you know repeat that again because they don't want to have to separate them. Dog fights are a drag at the best of times. And uh, so yeah, he's enjoying the summer and everything, everything's copacetic. And uh, yeah, in the fall, his limp came back. So that's kind of odd. You know, and you're touching his arm, you're moving, you're squeezing things like you're looking for some discomfort or pull away or, or whatever. And uh, he wasn't exhibiting any of that. So I was like, what the fuck's going on? Ended up uh, scheduling him a, a veterinary appointment. And, uh, he went in for that, and much as I'm laying on the floor here, I was laying on the floor with him in the, uh, the vet's office, and the vet comes in, and she's you know, checking him out, and he's like, yeah, he's just got good weight, and he's not you know, wincing in pain or showing any discomfort. She ascertained at that point in time that he had a little bit of arthritis happening. A big dog, getting a little bit old, happens to us all. So, yeah, <laughs> came home with him, had a good trip to town together, and uh, as, uh, as November progressed, that limp got a lot worse. What do you want? You want your belly rubbed? Eh? <laughs> the limp got worse, unfortunately, so we scheduled another appointment, and the first time I took him in, I was going to have uh, an x-ray done, but the, uh, the vet, awesome vets that they are, She's like, no, you don't, you don't need to do that. He's just got a little bit of you know, arthritis. Give him some arthritis medication. He'll be good. But like I said, November was going by and the lip was getting worse, progressively worse. He was favoring his, his leg off the ground more so than you know, wanting to put any weight on it. So another vet, another vet visit went down. This was on December the 3rd. And Adele took him in. 
I'll just go back a bit here. I, I had some bad vibes. <laughs> I had some bad vibes about what was going on with them. Um, totally off tangent. One of the Chicolton Mialfia, one of the six indoor cats, uh, is Abigail. And Abigail's like 1,700 years old or something. She's really, really old. You can tell just by looking at her, she's an old cat. So having had lots of animals over the years and having have an animal die in the wintertime, what you get to do is you get to stick it in the freezer until you can properly bury it when the ground thaws. So Adele said, hey, uh, Abby is old. Let's not take any chances. And let's get her a parking spot up in the pet cemetery with everybody else just in case, just in case. So that, that one day I decided to do that. I was up there and I, I dug her hole really, really quick and stuff. And uh, I'd already planned on digging a secondary hole. Um, just in case. We had a dog die several years ago in the wintertime and I had to keep it in the freezer and then bury it in the spring. And you, you don't want to fucking do that. Just, you don't want to do that. So, just in case, I, I dug a big old parking spot for my buddy here. Pretty, you know, four foot by three foot by three or four feet deep. And uh, the whole time I was digging it, <laughs> This guy was lying like, you know, two or three feet away from me. He was hanging out with me. So, anyway, jump back to December the 3rd, the doctor's appointment, the veterinarian's appointment. And uh, he, had, uh, he had a screen and an x-ray taken. And uh, my, uh, my fears were, yeah. So... Bailey was diagnosed with uh, osteosarcoma. So he's got cancer. It's quite common in big dogs, bone cancer. Now when they took a screen of him, when they took the x-ray, his whole shoulder area here, like his whole shoulder area, was just a big, big old Swiss cheese from the cancer I've eaten, eaten away. Obviously we're, wondering what our options are and uh, looking at something like amputation uh, would be very stressful on him because he would have to go down to the lower mainland and um, the stress of being away from us uh, there's a financial cost involved and even the vet told us that with such a large mass that we would incur a lot of debt and we might be able to get another month or two of, of life for him. So they say they, they So on the on the third of December we were told that about you know two to four months to live and that this uh, this cancer that's in his shoulder is gonna make its way into his chest. And when it gets into his lungs, uh, it's going to be really bad. So the other, the other main concern is because it's weakened, um, you could fracture it. And if he fractures it, then literally I, ha I have to put him down as quickly as possible because of the amount of pain he's going to be in. So as you see in the video, he's, uh, he's favoring it. He's getting along with the three limbs. Um, it's one of those things where I struggled with how I was going to, I was going to help my friend, my boy, because I wanted to do cannabinoid therapy on him because that's what I would do if I came down with cancer. But unfortunately, the mass is so huge, and if I were to initiate a, a three-month treatment, I would probably just be getting him really fucking high for his remaining time here because, again, if I would have been able to see what was going on when it was something small or a pinpoint or whoever knows, you know, you, you fucking second guess yourself like crazy in situations like this. What if, what if? So, he's on some medication now for pain. 
he's he's eating like a champ. He's got host dog status and uh, a small farm. All the dogs have jobs. They're farm dogs. They're not your like you know shampoo in the bathtub and sit on your couch kind of dogs. <laughs> as much as that would be cool, they stink. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're a couple months into the diagnosis, and it's all about ensuring that his quality of life is maintained, and he is very happy, feeling all that unconditional love that he so generously has given us for almost eight full years, and then one day, um, Bailey's not going to be around anymore. As you noticed, I turned comments off on this video because you don't need to say anything. Those of you that are pet lovers, you know, you get it. But, uh, yeah. Our pets are, are basically our kids. We, we don't, we do our best not to humanize them because they are animals. We try to uh, interact with them as the, uh, the alphas of, a, of the pack and deal with it accordingly. But uh, every day, every day I just am so thankful to have a little bit more time with him. And we just want to keep him as, as happy as possible. And yeah, I just wanted to let you know what was going on with Bailey. I'll throw some clips in here, some images, and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Some say love. Dream.